Dear Blizzard. Oh, wait, no, this is not for Blizzard. This is for. F Dear everybody. And that sounds kind of impersonal. I mean, just do it. Dear people? F oh, whatever. We'll just edit all those out and take the best one. Hi! It's me! Austin! I've been playing a mick butt ton of Overwatch lately, as everyone that follows me on Twitter can attest, which is kind of awesome to be honest. Being the parent of a baby, if I had any energy in my spare time, it was spent either like this or like this. But now I have a toddler, which you'd think that would mean that I'm more exhausted these days, and you would be right. <laughs> I am wiped all the time. I am tired all the time, but I'm not sick. Are you crazy? What did you say that's the ultimate jinx? But anyway, I like playing Overwatch for a few reasons. One, I love team sports, but I suck at basketball, so playing Overwatch feels like a way that I can engage with other people, work together, and score some points, all while never leaving my perfect apartment, which actually ties into the second reason I love Overwatch. I love, love, love Esports. I love watching people who are way better at a game than I could ever be compete against each other for real money. I love that in my life. I've seen esports grow from being something that used to be a niche hobby that we heard about happening far across the oceans in South Korea to established college esports teams with people who are paid to coach. Esports is something that has become validated as legitimate, and I am so unbelievably stoked. So when I play Overwatch, watch myself, I feel like, just a little, I'm engaging in that pro esports culture. Just, just a bit. I watch the games, I get pumped, I take new things I learn to the court, and DIE IMMEDIATELY! <laughs> Because I am not an esports professional, and I never will be one. I've come to terms with this. Even with an excessive amount of practice, the best I'll ever be at a video game is above average. Or, in the case of games like StarCraft 2, hours of practice will raise my skill level from totally abysmal to merely embarrassing. But just because I will never be the esports rock star I always wanted to be coming out to a crowd of adoring fans while the high-octane jams of nerf herder blares in the background doesn't mean that you can't be. I've spent the last few weeks studying what separates esports pros from the rest of us scrubs, and I have a bona fide 12-step program that you can buy for only 15 easy payments of $12.99 if you call now! Okay, not really, but this did get me thinking. What does separate esports pros from the rest of us? What makes them so good and us, on a good day, not even worthy of licking their boot heels? Well, it boils down to one specific thing. Suck. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Actually, it is one thing specifically, though. Fast as hell reflexes. Okay, well, actually, that's not technically true. A reflex is like when a puff of air hits your eye and you close it, or someone smacks your tendon with a hammer and your leg jerks, which, honestly, I'm embarrassed to admit this to y'all, but it wasn't until I was researching this episode that I realized that this is the origin of the term knee-jerk reaction. Feel free to make fun of me if you want. These involuntary responses by the body are reflexes, and they work in what's called the reflex arc, which looks like this, and it's super cool, but it's not what we're actually talking about today because when we say that someone has lightning fast reflexes, this isn't what we mean. We mean like super mega ultra awesome fast as a formula one ninja badassery like Bruce Lee stuff, punching people before they know what's even happening, catching flies with chopsticks, and slinging guns the fastest in the old westiest, and what we're actually talking about when we say reflexes in this context isn't reflexes, it's response, which, like, definitely doesn't sound as awesome. Ooh, check out Bruce Lee punching this guy in the face. Look at his super fast response times. Just doesn't have the same pop and pizzazz, but well, that's what it is. And this, response times are the key to, well, basically everything in the world you can be an expert at, from basketball to placing keyframes and after effects to playing guitar to, you guessed it, video games. And in order to get a handle on just what this means and how huge of a difference it makes, we're gonna have to do something awesome. Gather 
data. Data is the cornerstone of science! And while in some fields, yeah, it means doing some boring crap like looking at rocks or spreadsheets, but today? Today we're doing something way more awesome! Shooting each other in the face. But before we get to that, which is awesome, we gotta talk about how human reaction times work. You see, the average human response time is about 250 to 280 milliseconds, which is actually pretty fast, uh, and just to give you a sense, it's this fast. But experts in sports, martial arts, and yes, esports have base reaction times as fast as 110 milliseconds, which is this fast. That's less than half the reaction times you and I have. And when you're looking at base reaction times this quick, every millisecond counts. Which is why, for a second, we gotta talk about how human reaction times work. It's actually pretty similar to reflexes, interestingly, with some extra steps involved. You see, reactions, unlike reflexes, are conscious decisions. While reflexes can be invoked locally with receptors pulling responses super quickly, reactions have to go through the brain first, which slows things down so freaking much. So, let's take Overwatch for example. A thing happens. Boom! Right there. One frame of information in the form of light travels from the screen to your retinas. I sit about 60 centimeters from my monitor when I'm playing video games, which means it takes light a whopping 2 nanoseconds to reach my eyeballs, where the light is flipped and hits the receptors in the back of my eye. This information is then sent by the optic nerves to my brain, specifically the occipital oc Oh boy. I'm gonna get made fun of how I pronounce that one. Occipital oc occipital. Has to be occipital. Occipital lobe, which is in the back of the brain? I mean, what if design for- whatever! Nerves send signals significantly slower than the speed of light. In fact, they move slower than the speed of sound. This signal travels from my eyes to my occipital lobe at an excruciatingly slow 100 meters per second, meaning that it takes a whole one and a half milliseconds for information that hits my eyes to reach my brain. <gasps> that means, by the way, that the world that you're experiencing, everything you're reacting to, everything that you see, is is actually 1.5 milliseconds in the past. You are constantly lagging behind the rest of the world. Think about that for a good several hours and try not to have a massive fucking philosophical meltdown. What you're seeing right now is not the present, so enjoy that nugget for the rest of your life. After processing that information, your brain has to decide what to do, which is where a lot of the lost time really happens. And then it sends a signal down to whatever muscles need to do the thing, in this case, the ones in your arm and hands, which are playing video games, which, if you have an arm and neck as long as mine, takes another eight and a half milliseconds. So now our total latency time, just from nerve signals and the speed of light, is 10.16. Six milliseconds, but from there, things really start to slow down because up until now, your body or my body, someone's body, has just been sending and interpreting information. Now it's time to do stuff. Your muscles have to take those signals and move. They move by contracting. Normal muscle fibers can take over 100 milliseconds to contract. We've now reached a minimum speed of 110 milliseconds, but the average human reaction time is 250 milliseconds from the start of a signal to the output of the reaction, whereas experts have shaved that down to under half of that. Where is all this extra time coming from? Two places. The brain and the muscles. But now, finally, it's time to loop back to Overwatch for what may be the coolest experiment I have ever conducted. You know what there's not enough of in our world? Old West gunslinging. So, you know, I did it! Using a group of people from my Discord server, I hosted a true blue McCree versus McCree dueling tournament to gather numbers for reaction times. McCree is one of the best characters for this because, well, look at him! But also because he has what's called a hit scan weapon. Hit scan is an old first person shooter technology that basically doesn't render actual ballistic trajectiles. You heard me! Trajectiles! Fight me, English majors! I just made up a word! Anyway, hit scanning basically means the instant you pull the trigger, the game draws a straight line from the barrel of your gun straight forward. If anybody's hit by that line, they're immediately struck by the bullet. It's simple and easy. This is important to specify because Overwatch
Overwatch has different characters with different projectile types, and since I'm using these duels to get reaction time numbers, hitscan is helpful because I don't have to take into account travel time for bullets. With the right settings, bullets kill instantly, and I can get pretty consistent numbers. Also, congrats to Renki for not only winning the duel, but for ending with the fastest reaction time recorded. 189 freaking milliseconds. Good job! The people who did well definitely had above average reaction times, and the not winners had the worst with the slowest folk having a reaction time as slow as 322 milliseconds. Drink a cup of coffee, would ya? Now, 322 and 189 milliseconds is a pretty big gap, and honestly, my numbers were originally a lot higher because of lag. Because I mentioned before that in order to respond to something, light has to move from screen to eyeballs, eyeballs to occipital lobe, occipital lobe to the rest of the brain, the rest of the brain down the spinal column and to the fingers, and then the muscles have to contract, but in this case, that isn't the actual full path information has to take. <gasps> First, my signal has to be sent from my computer to the Overwatch servers, which normally has a tick time of 16 milliseconds, or rather, updates about 63 times a second, which means it takes a whopping 16 milliseconds for my signal to reach the Overwatch servers, and then the server updates the game and sends the information off to both players dueling, which takes another 16 milliseconds, then the light leaves their monitors, hits their eyeballs, travels down the nerves from their eyes to their occipital lobes, then to the rest of the brain, then down the spinal column into the fingers, then the muscles contract in the mouse, then the information travels from their computers back to the server, another 16 milliseconds, then the server updates the game and then sends the information to my screen, which takes another 16 milliseconds, giving us a total travel time from my computer to them to back again of 64 whole freaking milliseconds, which means I had to subtract that from my original numbers, which were a lot higher. Then there's the fact that Blizzard has a system called Favor the Shooter, which is shorthand for client-side hit detection. See, the reason Overwatch runs so smoothly is that your local computer handles a lot of the math instead of their servers, which means if you shoot someone on your screen, the person you saw yourself shoot will get hit, even if on their screen they ran behind a wall. Ordinarily, this means that people with high latency actually have a slight advantage over people who don't, but in this particular experiment, however, since the bullet means instant death and both people are shooting each other, the person with better latency actually has an advantage. But I'll get back to that in a second. In any case, even the fastest gunslinger in my Discord server pales in comparison to the reaction times of bona fide esports pros. Why is that? Well, to put it plainly, they ain't pros. There are two ways that esports pros lower their reaction times. Well, actually, it's just one way, but it affects two areas of the body. The super secret method to becoming an esports pro that can take you from zero in silver to hero in the top 500 has three simple steps. One, practice. Two, practice. And three, practice. It takes roughly 10 thousand hours to become an expert in something. And what is the purpose of that 10,000 hours in the case of esports and real sports to develop muscle and muscle memory? You see, it takes the average unexpert 255 milliseconds to respond to something, and we previously established that the time it takes just for signals to travel and for muscles to contract is about 110 milliseconds, which is about how fast the fastest people in the world react. But what are us plebeians doing that make it 255 milliseconds? We're thinking. 145 milliseconds of time wasted just thinking. That's more time than it takes for freaking esports pros to react to things from beginning to end. Before we can even formulate a thought, we're already dead. We'll get to how to shave that number down in a second, but there's actually another way to save time that's a lot easier that happens while you practice. Muscle growth. You see, the 100 milliseconds it takes for muscles to contract, those are the slow twitch muscles. Things that make, you know, a good distance runner or a carrier of heavy burdens. Slow twitch muscles are strong and efficient, but they take a long time to work. Fast twitch muscles, on the other hand, can contract much faster, as fast as 25 milliseconds. And the great thing about human bodies is we're designed to adapt. So all you have to do is use your fingers in a competitive, fast reaction environment, and your body will do all the work for you, transforming those long, slow twitch muscles into voraciously quick, fast twitch muscle fibers. Awesome! Just 
you know, be aware that fast twitch muscles are significantly weaker than slow twitch muscles, so don't you go trying to hang off any narrow ledges with your fingertips and appreciate that I did not make any easy dirty jokes during this whole section. So we can reduce our time for signal and muscle contraction down to an amazing 35 milliseconds just by working out properly. So what next then? Well, now's the hard part. Muscle memory. An expert in the field has worked to memorize roughly 100 thousand chunks of knowledge that directly ties to their expertise. Gary Kasparov, the world chess champion of 1997 who was defeated by the computer Deep Blue, had about a hundred thousand different board positions memorized. This means that Kasparov's brain over hours and hours and hours Hours of rigorous training had developed the ability to look at a game of chess with pieces arranged in different locations and instantaneously compare it to every single board position in his brain at once and devise a strategy from there. He could do this almost instantaneously because all that training had developed his brain for a specific specialized task. He had billions of neurons in his brain specifically connected just to play chess and this is what really saved saves time. Because when it's all said and done, with enough practice, any of us could beat an esports professional in a McCree duel. It's not that hard. With enough practice, we can shave our reaction times down to 110 milliseconds. No problem. Because this game here is simple and wouldn't even require that many specialized neurons to cut our thinking time down from over 150 milliseconds down to 75. The real skill and the real test comes when playing a real game. A game with 280 characters, 17 maps, and 12 players, which alone has over 5,000 permutations before the bullets even start flying. Esports pros, when playing a game, every single frame, they're comparing what they're experiencing to what they've experienced before. Their brains are doing an extraordinary amount of work behind the scenes. And you know how I said that Overwatch servers have a tick time of 63, meaning that they update 63 times a second? That leaves actually a surprisingly large margin for error. When your reactions are around 100 to 150 milliseconds, seconds, a 64 millisecond delay in communication makes a huge impact. That's why esports pros actually work on servers that have a tick rate of 144, meaning that it cuts down signal transmission time from one computer to another and then back again from 64 milliseconds to 27. This is freaking fast. And amazingly, while there's been a lot of research that explains why pro athletes age out, mainly that reaction time slow as we get older, there's been a lot of promising research research that shows that this slowdown is much, much less noticeable among people who play professional video games. So if you thought I was going to tell you that you have to be a young person to be an esports pro, the answer is no. You just got to have 10,000 hours of free time on hand. So there it is. Why you suck, why I suck, and why a handful of people are awesome. Time. They have a lot of it and we don't. So, you know, and if your mom gets on your ass about how much time you're spending at your computer, just tell her that you're trying to nail those esports scholarships that are bound to be coming in 10 years from your local university. Tell her that I said it's okay. Actually, uh, you know what, now, now that I think of it, maybe don't do that. Uh, and, and, and don't, don't, don't quit your day job. Sincerely, Austin. But we might have gone on living, but he made one fatal slip. We tried to match the ranger with a big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. Big iron, big iron. When he tried to match.